Alright, so here's my new quad that I just finished building. Um, did a bit of a tune, took it for a fly, crashed it a couple of times, and it's gone really well. So I'll take you through what's on it. Um, we've got the uh, GEP RC GEP TX5, otherwise known as a chimp. Um, frame just comes with a PDB and really simple instructions of how to put it together. Uh, it's not too complex. However, it is a little difficult to fit everything in. As you can see, there's not a lot of space. Um, but if you can overcome that, and if you buy the right parts, um, yeah, makes a neat little quad. It's a 210, uh, the Wizard is a 220 um, millimeter, so they're pretty close together in size. Um, what else have I got? I've got the uh, 20 amp, DYS D-Shot ESCs, so they're running D-Shot 600. Uh, they're compatible out of the box. 
and they're flashed currently with the BL Heli 16.6. And the motors are the Zoe FPV Z2205 2300kV. Come in a little box like this. They're great smooth motors I've found. Uh, even compared to these uh, Emacs motors that are really powerful. Um, I've definitely found that these are smoother and can handle um, higher P gains. Uh, video transmitter. Uh, grab this from Banggood. Uh, FT48X. Not sure what the brand is but that does um, from 25 milliwatt up to 600 milliwatt, uh, which is good. I'm running it on 200 milliwatt at the moment, and it seems fine. Uh, what else? I've got the uh, Rotor Riot uh, run cam in there, uh, which is great. Already set up, ready to go. Got the GoPro lens on it. Um, nice wide field of view for doing acro. Uh, got a TBS Triumph antenna. Um, which is nice and durable because I've broken the Aonway antenna already, so I've got on um, both quads. And then on oh, my goggles, I use the Aonway antenna because it doesn't matter if it um, is easy to damage because hopefully I won't be smashing into anything with my goggles. Uh, transmitter. It's actually a, a rebranded Flysky i6. It's the Echim one, but it's got the I've um, done custom firmware for it. Um, so it has 10 channels for SBUS, which is great. Um, so yeah, you just load some custom firmware on there and you're good to go. Um, using the FSIA6B um, receiver. Uh, that's been decased and it's pretty hard to see because it's all black, but that's been decased. And then heat shrunk there so I can fit the whole thing in. Uh, now the flight controller is a clone from Banggood um, of an Omnibus F4 with OSD, uh, which is pretty cool. Uh, it's the first time I've had an OSD on there because I um, haven't tried to install one on the Wizard yet. Um, and that's great, just monitoring the voltage is good. Instead of having a buzzer, you can see exactly what the VBAT voltage is. Um, haven't had any problems with it so far. Uh, time will tell, I guess. And then... The whole quad, uh, all the electronics have been conformal coded. Uh, I'll get my little UV light to show you that. Okay, got my UV torch. Shine that on there. And you can see all of the electronics are lighting up there with the conformal coding. Um, and then I've heat shrunk over the top of some of it. Electrical tape over the ESCs, but you get the gist. And that's everything. The PDB, ESCs, flight controller, transmitter, receiver, uh, even the board cam, uh, sorry, the, the board inside the, the camera, you take it out and coat that. Um, luckily the session is waterproof as stock. And that's the conformal coating there, it just goes on like nail polish. You see it lights up under UV, it just goes on clear. Uh, it's really good to have a UV torch so you can see if you've missed spots. And you can also see I've gotten some all over the table when I was doing it. Uh, what else? So, 3D printed uh, GoPro session mount. Um, I'll post a link in the description for that so you can get the file from Thingiverse. Uh, I didn't create it, I just had it uh, printed, which is good. Uh, as soon as I crashed it, uh, the join here split and the GoPro went flying out. So um, since then I've just put a Velcro strap to hold it together and I think that'll actually be a lot stronger because then it's, it's held together and it's held in tight and that just mounts up to this frame. Uh, one of the cool things about this frame is that it does have that that GoPro mount stock as long as you attach um, this mount to it. But then, if you get an Allen key, so you can loosen these two rear screws off and go for crazy angle if you want. So you can have about 30 degrees up to probably 45, 50 degrees. Um, personally, I think 30 degrees is fine. Uh, if anything, I'd like to be able to go to 25, but uh, it's good not to get the blades in the showing up in the video and you just tighten it up and then yeah so I think that's covered almost everything um, lastly these are the goggles I use uh, they're just some cheap Echim VR009 um, but so far they've been great and then they just installed a DVR on the side of it you just got to open it up and solder it on but then for under a hundred Australian dollars you can have yourself a, a nice set of goggles that just use a Fresnel lens uh, very clear, reception seems good, 
um, and they just run on a two cell. So yeah, that's about it. I'm pretty happy with the tune that's on it. Uh, it's almost a stock tune for Beta Flight 3.1. Um, it's running quite high refresh rates, so I'll, I'll go in now and show you my setup in Beta Flight. All right, I've got my quad all hooked up to my laptop. Let's have a look in Beta Flight. Uh, we'll just connect to the quad here. Uh, nothing specific in setup that you need to have a look at. In the ports tab, we've got Serial RX configured on UART1. Uh, just a note, if you're using a FlySky serial receiver, you can't use the PPM slash SBUS pin on the Omnibus F4. You have to move over to TX1 or one of the other UARTs and configure it here. It's something to do with serial inversion. Um, yeah. Okay, over onto the configuration tab, running DSHOT 600. Uh, we've got the motor idle throttle value at 4%. Uh, I haven't tested, it may be able to go lower than that. I think standard is 4.5%. Uh, the lower the better if you're inverted, um, so it's not pulling the quad uh, back down to the ground when you're at low throttle. Um, I've inverted the, uh, sorry, rotated the board 180 degrees from the way it was supposed to be set up, I assume. Um, that's just so that the USB goes in next to the power, for the way I've got it set up. Um, you can see here in the receiver part, uh, I've set it up for serial and iBus because I'm using a FlySky receiver. Um, I think it's SBus for the FreeSky. Um, uh, for the VBAT uh, battery voltage monitoring, um, turn that on. The Omnibus F4 has that built in internally and it runs on uh, VBAT as standard as well. You don't need to use a PDB to power it. And I've lowered the voltage scale by one point just to get it a little bit more accurate and to have it lower so that it's not um, reading the battery voltage as higher. I prefer that it was on the other side of the scale so that, um, you know, I'll come in and land before draining the battery too much. Um, because it's an F4, you can see the CPU load is at 4% with 8K, 8K. Um, I don't think there's any point in going any higher. Uh, I looked up the data sheet for the gyro on this, the MPU 6000 or 600, and, and its update frequency, its maximum update frequency is 8 kilohertz. So uh, you can let me know if there's a reason to go higher, but as far as I'm aware, the PID loop and the gyro update are as high as they need to go with this board. Um, I've got the accelerometer turned on so that you can get some extra features in black box and to use angle mode when landing. And the other features have just turned black box on, air mode all the time, controversially. Um, I like not having to think about having it on a switch, uh, just leave it on. And the OSD, which is built into this board. Uh, just worth mentioning here, the craft name that you set here is what will show up on your OSD. Over to the PIDs. Um, I'll start with my rates. I use Super 8 because I've learnt on beta flight since I started flying, so I haven't had to adjust to the difference between RC rate and super rate. So I use the super rates and try to shoot for around 900 degrees per second. I think that's nice and snappy, but not so quick um, that you lose some of the smoothness around the middle. I've got the Expo fairly high because I'm fairly new to this. I'm going to uh, back that off as I get a little bit more experienced with uh, keeping the stick smooth after doing flips and rolls. And then the PIDs are very close to stock. I think I've lowered the D a little bit and lowered the um, roll and pitch axis a bit. Uh, I think I lowered the pitch a fair amount because uh, this quad particularly is fairly well balanced on the pitch axis. Um, the wizard is set up, um, it's a lot longer, so you need a bit more um, P gain on the pitch axis to be able to affect the, the balance, particularly if you've got a HD camera hanging off the front of it. Um, but as this is set up with an underslung battery and the camera on top, it's very well center balanced. Um, it could probably go a little bit lower, but I haven't uh, really gotten into the nitty gritty of that tuning yet. I've left the angle settings just standard. I uh, haven't played around with them at all because I only use it for landing. Um, I've turned VBAT PID compensation on and the TPA I just bumped up a little bit. Nothing special in the receiver tab. Uh, modes, I set the arm to uh, auxiliary 6 on this uh, transmitter. That just means I can uh, arm and disarm with my right finger while I'm controlling the throttle with my left. Uh, I think that's nice to be able to do. 
Uh, I've got angle on the far left. Uh, it's just so that I can switch that on when I come into land if I feel like it. I've set up the beeper uh, for if it gets lost, although I haven't attached a beeper physically to the cord yet. I'll get to that shortly. And put a uh, black box on a switch as well because as you can see there's only 16 megabytes of data flash on this board so it's nice to set it up uh, with a switch so that you can turn it on and record the black box data when you want to be able to read it instead of having to clear it each time you want to uh, get some more data. It does fill up basically in one flight so leaving it empty and then turning it on when you want to record I think is much more practical. Uh, nothing in the motors tab. OSD uh, first thing, I turned off the artificial horizon and, and the sidebars. Uh, I don't think you need them. Main battery voltage I've got right in the center there, and that'll start flashing when it gets below uh, the voltage set up in configuration. Uh, I've got the on time and fly time, and an alarm for four minutes for the fly time. Uh, I think that's good because around four minutes for me, but the way I fly means I'll definitely be towards the end of the battery. I may even lower that in the future as I get a bit more aggressive. Uh, craft name, as I said earlier, is set in the configuration section. And throttle position, I uh, just put that in there because it doesn't take up much screen real estate and it's interesting to see uh, when you look back at the DVR footage. And finally, the black box uh, it uses the onboard data flash chip and uh, I've set it to 2 kilohertz, which is, I think, enough resolution to be able to get interesting data from it without filling up the data flash straight away. I'm pretty sure if you had it running at 8 kilohertz, it'd fill up before you even did one uh, pack. And that's it. I can disconnect. All right, well, that's enough of me talking. Thanks for watching. Uh, let's go fly some quads. Searching for